We can now see that I have two different forms. So on new form, I have customer name, product, quantity, only uh, four fields actually. And then on edit form, if I highlight it, I actually have a new color, uh, a lot more um, fields that I can fill out. And if it was the if it was not sold, so if we go to Bart Simpson here, you can see I'm actually missing another field. And as soon as we hit yes. The customer feedback allows us to type in here. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions. Today I got a question from a user and he wanted to know how to do a few columns. So let's see, he wanted to do invoice number, customer name, product and quantity. So I kind of wanted to show how to do more integration with SharePoint and Power Apps with a customized form. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's see here. There's two ways to integrate customized forms with Power Apps and SharePoint. You can go to Integrate, Power Apps, Customized Forms, or when you click on New, you'll also see a button up here that says Customize with Power Apps. So you can do either way. Um, if you go into Configure Layout, it's gonna ask you for some JSON. You can do some JSON and and configure your uh, layout there also. All right, so we're in SharePoint. I've created a SharePoint list called Items Sold. I'm going to create some columns. So from my question that I got was they wanted to do invoice number, customer name, product, and quantity. So a lot of newer people to SharePoint will add columns here by using the modern layout. I still like to go to list settings and create my columns here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the columns they wanted. So invoice number, in SharePoint, I'm gonna use the ID field. Customer name, I'm going to rename that. So let's see if I can zoom in, there we go. Customer name, I'm gonna rename the title field. So title field, I'm gonna rename to customer name. Next, they wanted, let's see here, product. So I'm gonna do product. And you know, we could make this a choice field, but we don't need to do that in SharePoint. We can do that on the Power Apps side. And finally, quantity. Now the only reason to make something a number field is if you're gonna do math behind it. So maybe we'll do math behind it um, later on. And then I'm gonna add a couple more fields. Let's, let's add um, sold. And then I'm gonna add customer feedback. And we'll make that a multi-line text field. All right. All right, so we have a SharePoint list. I wanna turn on the ID. So we're gonna go into all items. We're gonna turn on the ID field and we're gonna change that position one. All right, so now we have ID, customer name, product, quantity, sold, customer feedback. All right, so I just uh, clicked on customize app. And we have our customer name, product, quantity, sold, customer feedback, and attachments. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove attachments. I don't need attachments right now. All right, and so if we wanted to add another field in here, we can add something in there like ID. We can put the ID at the top. Now, add some more fields in here. Just so we can see, I want uh, to show you something. So I'm gonna add uh, created by, modified by, and created and modified. I'm gonna change the color of our Power App here just so we can see. So if we change it all to blue, if we go to form screen, we'll notice here that we have a height and it's using an app height, right? And it's saying 790 and we actually have a width. And the width is 444. And I'm guessing this is, you know, Microsoft recommended sizes, but you know, sometimes we know what we're doing. Let's increase the width by to 900 and give ourselves a lot more space. So I'm gonna give us a lot more space in here. All right, we have a lot more space. I can even, you know, leave it as two columns down here. In the form screen, I'm actually gonna increase the height also. So the height, uh, it's at 790. I'm gonna bring it up to 1,000. And we're gonna bring the form all the way down. So SharePoint might fight with you a little bit, 
But after you kind of work with it a little bit, you can see that uh, I have increased the width to a lot more space and the height just by a little bit. But still, that's giving us a lot more space. I'm going to actually increase it a little bit more just to see, you know, how far SharePoint will let me increase it. And I realize that Microsoft is probably trying to block us from doing this maybe to make it mobile friendly or something. But sometimes I know people are gonna fill this out in SharePoint and I want that extra space. All right, so um, Power Apps and SharePoint did fight me a little bit, but I just kind of went back in and w went back to it and uh, redid it. And now you can see I have taken up half the screen with my Power App form and I have tons of space. So I've increased the space of the Power App right here. You don't have to go into Power Apps, it's straight from SharePoint but we have lots of space as you can see and we can refresh. I think uh, SharePoint is gonna be okay with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify from here. So that's just one tip is that you can actually increase the Power App size from when you integrate with SharePoint. So I, I think that's very helpful because when you're in that small little panel on the side, you know, it's just not much room to work with and I'm sorry Microsoft, sometimes I want a lot more space for, you know, maybe I want a calendar in here, maybe, there's all kind, maybe I want a giant picture. There's all kinds of reasons I could want a panel this big. So I have increased the panel size tremendously. Here. All right, so I'm in Power Apps now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the form and we are going to edit the fields. So product is going to be a allowed values. So we'll have many different values we can choose from. Um, customer feedback what I'm gonna do oh, I'm gonna change sold also so let's go to sold sold is also going to be an allowed values all right so product uh, we'll give it a few different allowed values I'll unlock this and uh, I have no clue so widget one widget two year one, year two. I'm just kind of making up some things. All right, so we have a few different options. Um, we can even allow an empty selection. So on the right side, my face might not be in the way. Let's see if it's over here. So if we go to items, allow empty sex selection, we can change that to true. That way we can actually have nothing in there if we want. Um, I'm going to pull this form down a little bit because I need a button that says if it's new or not. Insert button, uh, new form, SharePoint form one. So I'm just adding a button in there, new form. So now when I click play, I can actually see it. So we have a uh, product, you know, it does have a blank, you know, widget one, widget two, gear one. The quantity, we are going to allow the user to type that in. Sold, the options are gonna be yes, no, and once again, I'm gonna allow for a blank option, true. All right. All right, so we do have a blank option in there. <clears throat> now, customer feedback. I don't want to see customer feedback until it's sold. So we're actually going to have two different forms, right? So once it's sold, then we'll be able to see customer feedback. So I'm going to go to a customer feedback and I'm going to change the visibility to if sold, uh, let's see, this is actually, let's see, sold. Data card value four. So data card value four dot selected dot value equals yes, then it's true, else it's false. All right, so we're not gonna actually see customer feedback unless it's true. Now the next thing about customer feedback is it's a multi-line text field. I actually want to make it a rich text editor. So I'm going to click on this card, input or text, I'm going to do rich text editor. So we're going to unlock and add. And I'm going to 
put it in there and give it a lot more space, right? So now we have a rich text editor. And I'm going to delete data card value five. So that's the previous, that's right here. I'm gonna delete this. And it's gonna give me some red X's. It's gonna say, hey, I don't know where everything goes. So with these red X's, all I'm gonna do is replace it with rich text editor one. I'm gonna do the same thing on this red X. And it's actually it's actually gonna be a little bit different here. So let's do rich text editor. And I believe it's gonna say H editor one to HTML text. So on the update of the card, it's actually gonna read the rich text editing. And I'm gonna remove this um the default text here. The default text is actually going to be, I believe, so if we look at customer name, right, default text is parent.default. We're going to do the same thing. The default text is parent.default. All right, so we have now rich text editor for customer feedback. We have our customer name, product, quantity, sold, uh, who it's created by, modified by, and we have a very large form. And customer feedback is only going to be visible when sold is true or sold is set as, as yes. So another thing I want to do is I want to differenti differentiate between a new form and an edit form. So I don't want to show created by, modified by, created or modified until it's on an edit form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the visibility and I'm going to say if this item dot created and what we're gonna have to do is actually say if is blank and I'm gonna put created in there then it's true else it's false so if this item created is blank then it's not visible else it is visible so right now created is um, blank, modified. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Modified, created, I'm just copy pasting in that formula. Modified, all right. So we already have a very simple form. Up here at the top, you know, you could put your logo for your company, um, a toolbar, you know, whatever you want at the top. But right now I just have a new form up there just so I can uh, do that. So let's go ahead and save. On a new form, you notice we don't see any of these other fields. And actually, we probably want to do the same thing for sold. What we're going to do is we're going to say the customer name, product, widget one, quantity, we sold 50. Sold, I, I guess I'm going to leave that blank for now. And I'm just going to hit save. Now you notice we have one field in here. Let's go ahead and check it out when we edit. So when we edit, our other fields down here are now populating. And if we click sold, yes, we have our customer feedback. This is our text. And we can write in here, you know, one, you know, we can write all kinds of things. We can bold it. We now have a rich text editor. And then we can save that. So the rich text editing is now showing in modern SharePoint. So we have the rich text editing. Uh, we Our new form is different than our edit form. Completely different, right? So we have two different forms right now. Uh, let, me, let me keep going and building on this. Another thing that I've realized that I like to do is I like to change the color between the two forms just so people, I don't know, it's kind of like the UX, so people get the right mindset. They understand, hey, I'm not in the new form anymore. All right, so I'm gonna change it to 245. It's like a little bit of a blue. I'm gonna do that for every single part. So I can actually just go through each one and fill that in. Just copy paste the fill on each card. And I'll fast forward through this. All right, so now I have updated my SharePoint form. 
Let's go ahead and refresh. We can now see that I have two different forms. So on new form, I have customer name, product, quantity, only uh, four fields actually. And then on edit form, if I highlight it, I actually have a new color, uh, a lot more um, fields that I can fill out. And if it was the if it was not sold, so if we go to Bart Simpson here, you can see I'm actually missing another field. And as soon as we hit yes, the customer feedback allows us to type in here with rich text formatting. You know, so we can have different headings and we can have more space in here if we wanted. Um, so that's all I'm going to show you today. I think next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to bulk add. So that's where the user's question was, was how do you bulk add? So let's say there, you know, one customer, you know, wanted to bulk add all these products. So I'm going to do that next. And then I'll, I'll probably create a new screen and we'll bulk add all the way down. So thank you guys for watching. I know this was a short one, but I just wanted to show you these, these couple of tips that you can do when creating forms in SharePoint. You know, you get a lot more functionality out of it and you get a lot more space if you just increase that width of that Power App. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this was helpful.